Yeah, so I think the selling is easier to attribute than the buying was. And a lot of these are stocks that didn't even get close to their prior highs in the way that some of the large NASDAQ growth names were able to. And so they're rolling over from a lower high, which the technicians would tell you is just confirming a downtrend that we all knew um, was, was already in place. So um, GE is now trading at a level you haven't been able to buy it since 1987. Feel free. Be my guest. Um, the airlines look like death on toast. American Airlines, new low today. Um, and the banks, even the best bank in, in the country, J.P. Morgan, is, which I own, is 40% off its highs. So the stocks that you would think should be down are down. Um, anything travel related, anything events related. Um, and, and really, I don't see the reason why we would expect anything different. Um, this is the quarter we're in right now that's going to be the, the nadir um, of earnings. And things should start getting a little bit less bad from there. But we're still looking at full year earnings for the S&P 500, negative 20%. If we're lucky, hopefully a big rebound in 2021 as the comps get easier. But when are we going to get back to those 2019 levels? That really could take years. And a lot will be dependent on science. A lot will be dependent on politics and when various states get back to business and when people feel better. Things that are just there's no precedent. You can't actually predict them. So in the absence of, of those certainties, we're left with all of the uncertainties. And it makes total sense to me that we would be mired in a trading range uh, somewhere around where we are. Mike, uh, to the point of the trading range, what are the, what are the key levels uh, you keep an eye on on the S&P 500 that would make you think we've broken out of this recent short term uh, range uh, to the downside? To the downside, I mean, I think you're looking at in the low 2700s was was uh, the low from one of the last 5% pullbacks we had. I mean, the difference between what's going on right now uh, and the, the continued weakness in those uh, hard hit areas that Josh was just mentioning is we're having a shakeout in the big Nasdaq stocks and a shakeout after a very, very good run, an extremely good run on a relative basis. So I would say 2720 in the S&P, a lot of people are looking at. And then you have to get down below 2600 to get rid of uh, more than half of this, uh, this whole rebound rally, that's when you start to say, is it really rolling over for good? I think on the way to that, if we were to continue to, to decline, people are going to be very scared. They're going to assume it's going to be a retest, and it may or may not be. It's, I think the burden of proof is on those people who think we shoot right back uh, to the lows. I think sideways with 2,900, 20, or 3,000 is an upside, 2,700 uh, or so, maybe a little below that on the downside, makes a lot of sense right now, given the range of uh, potential outcomes we're, we're grappling with. Josh Brown, you know, part of the narrative today is the cautious commentary from some big name investors, Stanley Druckenmiller at the Economic Club of New York, David Tepper on, on Halftime Report with Scott, you know, all, all sort of coming out. They're talking about their positions. They're talking about the fact that the risk reward doesn't look all that great. It's, it's, it's things that you've been talking about. Do you think that has an impact? It might have a psychological impact at the margin, but I, I think this is probably the most important response I can give you to that question. And I want everyone to pay very close attention to me. Stan Druckenmiller and, and uh, David Tepper are two of the all-time greatest traders who ever lived, like literally in the Pantheon if not top five, 100% top 10, even they couldn't repeat the performance that got them there. And they're both retired, by the way. So I don't think that individual investors or the vast majority of professional investors who are watching us right now should be reacting at all to what they have to say. First of all, they would be the first to tell you a lot of what they do is gut instinct. Tepper's not systematic. Druckenmiller is, is Soros-esque when their back hurts. They, they take risk off like that's not that's not repeatable. And they're not going to tell you when they change their mind. And this is the key, Sarah. The biggest trade in Druckenmiller's career was pulling two 180s in the space of four days, being out of the Nasdaq, doing the biggest tech boom ever, then being all in. And then two days later, not only being out, but being short. He's not going to call you. So on January 17th, if you were watching Squawk Box that morning, Kernan got an email from both of them. They were bullish as all get out. They loved being in stocks, intermediate term bullish, short term bullish. They couldn't see what was coming. No one else could either. And they changed their mind. So do not change your asset allocation based on Druck. 
because Druck ain't going to call you when he has a different opinion a few days later.